Hi everyone, Tim here and today I want to talk about Dishonored 2, a second installment of one of my favorite games of 2012 that is made by Arcane Studios. If you're not familiar with the series, it's a stealth and action first person game that is basically been there to scratch that thief itch for years before we got a thief 4. It also has a mix of some Deus Ex like levels and mechanics that allow you to approach the game quite, uh, you know, using different playstyles basically. So today I want to do a bit uh, different approach to this review and go from negatives to positives. So let's start with cons and uh, I'm talking about the PC version of the game as usual so you might know that I'm mostly playing PC games. Um, my major gripe with Dishonored 2 is actually its performance. It was abysmal at launch and it got a bit better after the patch but it's still kind of shaky. I still don't have a consistent FPS and it tends to go crazy once in a while once you go out to the open spaces. This is quite bad, but Arcane already promised more patches to make it better and, you know, they are usually um, pretty good at fixing games because the first Dishonored is now running really, really good. Alright, this is actually it about cons, like strong cons, uh, so let's talk about the things that are kind of neutral with this one. Um, like the first I want to mention is uh, that this game is basically more of the same. There is nothing really that stand, stands out quite as much as um, new mechanics and gameplay was in the first game. They didn't innovate enough and it's, you know, if you didn't like the first game you won't like this one either because it's not that different. Coming more, the storyline in this game is pretty much the same and if you play Corvo it's almost identical, you have to save Emily and um, the saddest part of it, you know, you can now pick between playing as Corvo and as Emily the storyline doesn't really change with the picked character. There are some minor changes in dialogue because obviously they have to refer to you as Emily or Corvo, but that's about it. Nothing really goes uh, differently, not even in the minor details. Okay, the next thing I am not sure how to feel about is the changes to the chaos system. If you don't know in the first part, the chaos system was basically responsible for handling the world changes depending on who you kill and who you spare. So if you kill a lot of people, you get like swarm of rats uh, that would attack you and, you know, attack other people and so on and so forth. In first game, that impacted the game quite heavily. Uh, in Dishonored 2, that actually doesn't seem to have effect that much. So I've um, finished my first playthrough as a complete non-lethal stealth uh, play. And this way, you know, it all was nice and clean. There was no rats and so on and so forth. And the second playthrough I'm doing right now, and this is exactly what you see on the screen, is actually for Emily and I'm just killing everyone. And this is like half of the game in and I don't see really any actual impact on it. Like, you know, in the way that it was in the first game, you could see the impact already on the second mission here. This is like mission five and it's still nothing really happens. Okay, yeah, there's a bit more rats, but they don't seem to do anything to me. Um, the next complaint I have, or I mean, I guess, again, this is, you know, not a real complaint because... Um, it didn't impact the game that much, but the fact that, you know, the graphics are not massively upgraded. There is not that much change, and if I launch the Dishonored 1 now, yes, I can see that the Dishonored 2 now has a bit more polygons, and there's some more nicer effects that are allowed by the um, upgraded um, engine, I guess. But I don't see the massive difference here, and I'm not sure, again, this is make the performance issues even more strange, because I don't see the massive jump in uh, visuals here, which is a bit strange. Uh, and the last neutral gripe I have with it is the fact that there is no New Game Plus, which actually looks like it would fit uh, quite perfectly here. But it was already promised in the upcoming update in December by Arcane Studios. So uh, really waiting for that. I want to try to uh, complete the game once more as Corvo with uh, buying all the powers and upgrades I can, which would be quite fun. Okay, now let's talk about the positive things of this game and the first one being gameplay. Gameplay is great, especially so if you enjoyed the first part. And you know, if you played it, you know that the game absolutely nails stealth mechanics. This time around they still up to par, they are really well pl uh, fleshed out and you really enjoy like sneaking around and you know, figuring out the ways how to distract the guards so you can sneak past them and so on and so forth. On the other hand, um, 
I mean, okay, let's talk first about the new powers. So there are some new additions to the game, as I said, so it's not just like completely similar. There are some new powers and some new tools that you can play with. For example, Korva can now possess corpses and has a better control over the uh, swarm that it summons. And Emily has actually a full new set of powers, which uh, were none there. Uh, but they are quite similar to Corvo's, but you know, they are sort of uh, different takes on that. So if Corvo can stop time, then Emily can enchant enemies that will just stand there and do nothing. If Corvo can um, enter the, or control the mouse and run around using the uh, mice bodies, then Emily can turn into the shadow form and essentially do more or less the same. So they are not too different, but they give you a variety of different things that you can do with them and how you can combo them. All of that works really cool with an amazing level design, which was always sort of a trademark of um, Arcane Studios. Especially so with the Co-op Work Mansion, that is a completely mechanized uh, level that you can change by pulling levers. And it works so well. It's like, it's amazing how cool it is to explore, especially with the stealth approach. I mean, it's it actually... The interesting part is that you enjoy it less when you just kill everyone because you don't need to sneak around and you can just pull things and you know figure it out uh, how it works like this. But if you want to be stealthy, you don't want to pull any levers, you have to look for the ways around and this is when it gets really, really cool. And the same goes for Stilton's Manor, which uh, gives you a time travel um, feature. I think it was featured basically in a few trailers before the game release and a few interviews with the developers, so that should not be a major spoiler. Uh, it's also very cool and interesting. Um, I would say it's not as interesting as, say, Titanfall's 2 time traveling level, but it's still really nice and you can do some very interesting things with shifting between those uh, two levels, essentially. And the last uh, great positive thing about it is the variety of approaches and playstyles that basically, you know, can scratch just about any first person shooting each that you have, as well as to provide loads of replay value because you can play this game in more than one way. There's about four, I guess. And uh, this is like one of the uh, coolest thing about this game is, you know, you can just go really stealthily and really silently and be a ghost that no one sees or you can just go guns blazing and murder everything that you see in your face and um, the what I kind of dislike is the fact that uh, both of those playstyles are really enjoyable but with the second game it actually feels like you are missing out when playing stealthily because you don't have as much ways to deal with people as you have when you go lethal because there's like a tons of ways to kill people, traps, tanks that you can blow up, um, like the powers that you have to murder people and so on and so forth. There are some of those things that you can use in a non-lethal approach as well, but not as many, which makes me a bit sad. So I do prefer like stealth city approach because it gives you more uh, sort of, um, you know, this intense feel, I guess. In general, uh, if you like the first Dishonored and don't mind, or in fact want more of the same, then Dishonored 2 is definitely for you. If you are looking for something new for innovations, new gameplay and so on, sadly you won't find much of it here. It's just more of the same, as I said, uh, which doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. Um, the last thing I want to say is that basically Arcane now are working on a new Prey game, which I hope will be, like, we'll have more innovative stuff in terms of game mechanics than they did in Dishonored 2, and maybe will be a better PC version, because this, you know, it still doesn't work well. Like, even, even on my machine, which is, okay, maybe not top of the line, but pretty decent, it doesn't perform that well, and those FPS drops are absolutely terrible. But yeah, um, once again, if you enjoyed the first one, you should probably get this one. It works really, yeah, like, it's a really good game. Um, that's about all I have to say about Dishonored. Thank you for uh, watching and listening. And as always, see you next time. Bye.